I want you to go through the whole Quran with me. Join me at bayna.tv. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فمن حاجك فيه من بعد ما جاءك من العلم فقل تعالوا ندعو أبناءنا وأبناءكم ونساءنا ونساءكم وأنفسنا وأنفسكم ثم نبتهل فنجعل لعنة الله على الكاذبين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد once again everyone السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته uh, I will start today's discussion with a rough translation of the ayah we are discussing and I will deliberately try to do a bad translation and try to undo the bad over the course of this lecture. فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ Then whoever uh, was to argue against you, try to make a case against you, in, in its matter, meaning in the matter of the truth or in the matter of Isa alayhi salam. You could look at it either way. Uh, even after knowledge has come to you, فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا Then declare, come on, we shall call our children, وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ and your children, وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ And we will call our women and your women. وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ And we'll call ourselves and yourselves. ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ Then we shall become uh, vulnerable before God, uh, uh, before Allah. Also, some have translated, we shall call on Allah's wrath. But we'll explore that, that phrase more. فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ Then we shall therefore place the curse of Allah on those who lie. Did you find it, Ahmad? Okay, it's okay. Have a seat. فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ Then we shall place the curse of Allah on those who lie. The Christians from Najran that came to visit the Prophet ﷺ, this is an ayah about them. And uh, basically Allah says, if they still argue about with you about Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, then tell them, you know, we'll bring our families, our children, our women, uh, and ourselves, and you bring yours, and we will ask Allah to curse either side. So we have to figure out what in the world that means. That may Allah curse the one that is lying. Okay. The first thing I want to qualify these lectures with uh, that I think will help you understand the way I am looking at and the way I'm leaning towards interpreting uh, these ayat is that the phrase Ahlul Kitab the phrase Ahlul Kitab gives a particular connotation here. Nowadays Ahlul Kitab, when we use the word Ahlul Kitab we refer to it as Jews and Christians. That's like a common way that we understand the phrase Ahlul Kitab. In Ali Imran, I'm not making a generalization about the entire Qur'an because I have not studied the use of Ahlul Kitab across the entire Qur'an. But I can say with a good degree of confidence about what is going on in Surat Ali Imran as far as the phrase Ahlul Kitab is concerned. It is actually referring predominantly to people that are knowledgeable in the book qualified in the book, maybe even ordained ministers, cardinals, bishops, preachers, ministers, rabbis, people that are knowledgeable in the Jewish or Christian scriptures to the point where they are religious leaders uh, or you know, well-educated and well-versed in the book, they're the ones being called Ahlul Kitab. That's further supported by the linguistic meaning of the word Ahl, which actually is like the idea of Mu'ahl, someone who's qualified of something, someone who's associated with something and Ahl of it. Uh, the ahl of a, a responsibility is someone qualified to carry a responsibility. So when he says ahlul kitab, these are people qualified in the book. So it's referring to the clergy of the religious class. And that also further, what reinforces this view of mine for myself, is that the narrations that are surrounding this particular set of ayat, that are, these narrations are very authentic, they're found in both Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, are referring to actually people of religious clergy that came from Najran, the Jacobite Christians that came from Najran to meet with the Prophet ﷺ because of what they felt was a claim he's making about their scripture. And they wanted to discuss scripture with him. So this is not just the average Christian or the average Jew that's being talked about. The second thing that I'd like to mention that will come up later on, probably much later on in the series of these ayat, because this series of ayat from 61, I believe, is at least up until 101, 102 ayat number. That's one section of ayat. So it's a long piece of the surah that after the narrative of Isa this is the next long piece of the surah. In this piece of the narrative, 
uh, there, you know, it seems like, you know, some might think that this uh, conversation is happening with the Jew or with the Christians, because it's about Jesus. So the audience is the, uh, the Christians that came to visit. But I would argue that there's enough indication in these passages that the audience is deliberately both Christians and Jews. That is an important consideration for Ali Imran, that the conversation is not exclusively Christians, it's actually Christians and Jews. And there are hints towards that that I will bring up as the, the discussion continues. But for now, the one hint that I want you to be aware of, there's an old Arabic saying, ani wa ya jarra. Like um, the husband and wife are having a fight. And you know, back in the old days, there used to be this veranda open courtyard in front of the house, which was basically the living room under the sky. Right? The, the food is being cooked out there, the bread is being made there, the sitting place is that, the conversations are happening there. And the only thing separating your living room from the next people's living room is one wall. So the old story goes that the husband and wife are, are having an argument, and guess who's got their eye, their ear stuck to the wall? The neighboring girl. The neighbor's wife, she's like very interested in the arguments that are happening in this, in, among this couple. So the husband one day says, I'm talking to you and you listen too, neighbor, because I know you're listening. So he says, Okay, so I mean you, but you listen, you go ahead and listen, go ahead and enjoy. Right? So that's what he's saying. The point is, Allah is talking to Christians, and implicitly, I know you're listening. So who's also listening? The Jews are also, the, the Jewish tribes are also listening. And this was important because the Jewish tribes, Banu Quraidah, for example, Banu Nadir, we will find in this narration that when the Christians were challenged, guess who they went to for suggestions? They went to the Jews. And says, this verse was real, what should we do? And this is, in these ayat you'll find even the story of Jesus. If this was only about Christians, then the only thing that should be debated is whether or not he's the son of God. But what's being debated there, he's calling them to Torah. They rejected him because of the Torah. They did kufr. Who's that a criticism of? That's a criticism of the Jews. And that's a continuation of وَيَقْتُلُونَ النَّبِيِّينَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ from Surah Al-Baqarah. That's continuing. And then later on in this surah, again, you're going to find that the first house built for Allah's worship was Makkah. Who was rejecting Makkah as the Kaaba? The Jews were. So there are going to be hints that the conversation, though it seems directly addresses the Christians, the Jews are, an, like Allah is aware of the presence of the Jewish audience, and He's strategically going to speak in a way that hits two targets with one arrow. Like two birds with one stone are being targeted, and that's part of the, part of the power of the Qur'an. Two audiences that are very different from each other are both being addressed in their own way at the same time with the same words. Okay? Now, this ayah, the challenge came to these people of Najran, and to understand it, the first thing I'm going to do is explore the word nabtahil, it's unique vocabulary of the Qur'an, bahal, the, or, the origin of the word bahal, and so let's talk about that a little bit, and then we'll look at the narration, and then come back to this ayah. So, ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ نَاقَةٌ بَاهِلْ لَا صِرَارَ عَلَيْهَا وَقَدْ بَهُلَتْ حَلَّ صِرَارُهَا وَتَرَكَ وَلَدُهَا بِرِدْعِيهَا what happens is the, the she-camel, its udder, is not giving milk. The baby wants to drink milk and it's not giving milk. And there's a part of its skin or some kind of cover on the udder keeping the milk from coming out. When that, when that tears off and it becomes exposed and its milk starts coming out, that's actually called the she-camel became bahil, from the same origin, bahil. Of something to be exposed, of something to become vulnerable. This is why they also use imra'atun bahila, a woman that's bahila, is actually a woman who doesn't have the protection of a man. She doesn't have a husband, she doesn't have a brother, she doesn't have a father, and she's exposed in a, in a sense that anybody can attack her, or anybody can take advantage of her, or she feels scared at night, etc. She's vulnerable, in, in, and people can take advantage of her, and that sort of thing. That's called bahila. In other words, the word has to do with vulnerability or exposing a weakness. That's what the word has to do with. The idea of ibtihal is actually when you come before Allah exposed and weak. So when you call on Allah having exposed yourself and declared your weakness, that's actually the kind of prayer that's mubahala. And mubahala suggests that you are actually leaving yourself, you know how some, something vulnerable is open to attack? So you expose yourself before Allah in a way that you're open to a punishment from Allah. Ya Allah, if I am wrong, may you punish me. Those kinds of words, what have you just done? If you say words like that, then you are so confident that you're not wrong, that you've left yourself vulnerable. You expose yourself to the wrath of Allah, that's how confident you are. And the only way you can do that is if you are absolutely convinced 
that either you are right or you're absolutely convinced that Allah will not do anything, meaning you don't believe in Allah's existence or you don't believe in Allah's power or you don't believe Allah is listening, which means you're not a believer. Those are the only two possibilities if someone would to be vulnerable like that before Allah and say, you know what, Ya Allah, yes, if I'm wrong, then let me be punished. Right? Let, uh, you do as you please and I'll, I'll declare it. So now, I'm going to share with you what the narrations are regarding this. They're really, really interesting narrations. And I'll skip the, you know, Lisan al-Hal. Actually, I'll, I will mention Lisan al-Hal. This is Hassan Hassan Jabal mentions that the idea of doing this ibtihal is فَهُوَ حَرِّيٌ أَنْ يُعَاجِلَ بِالْعُقُوبَ Someone who speaks with Allah in a way that says it's appropriate that punishment should come to me if I defy you. وَهَذَا التَّخَلِّي هُوَ اِسْتِبْعَادٌ لِرَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ عَنِ الْمُبْطِلِ وَهُوَ مَعْنَ اللَّعَنِ And if somebody does do that, if somebody does say to Allah, Ya Allah, may you punish me if I'm wrong or if I'm lying or whatever, and they openly say it and they are lying, then haven't they opened up the doors to Allah's curse on themselves? Like they've just destroyed themselves with those words. So with that in mind, let's read something from Bukhari and Muslim. أَخْرَجِ الْبُخَارِي وَمُسْلِمِ أَنَّ الْعَاقِبُ وَالسَّيِّدْ أَتَيَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Aqib wa Sayyid means the preacher or the minister. Whatever, you know how in Christian, in, in churches, there are ranks of religious, you know, there's the, there's the Pope, there's Bishop, Cardinal, there's like ranks, right? So the higher rank is the Sayyid. Of, of the group that came, there are people in ranks. So the, the leader of the group is called the Sayyid. Aqib, the guy behind him, meaning the assistant. So you can say the, the minister and the assistant preacher. Okay, they both came. Al-Aqib was Sayyid, the assistant and the leader. Ataya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They both came to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fa'arada an yula'ina huma. So uh, the Messenger of Allah wanted them to call on Allah's curse in case they think that the Messenger is lying. May Allah curse me if I'm lying. And may he curse you if you're lying. You want to, you want to make that statement or not? Fa'ala ahaduhuma li sahibihi. One of them said to the other, La tula'inhu. No, don't take him on in this challenge. فَوَاللَّهِ لَإِنْ كَانَ نَبِيًّا I swear to God, if, if, it, if it actually turns out that he's a prophet, فَلَا عَنَنَا And he calls on Allah's curse on us if we're lying, لَا نُفْلِحُ نَحْنُ وَلَا عَقْبُنَا We will never succeed and nor will our, any of our future generations will be annihilated. مِنْ بَعْدِنَا That come after us. فَقَالُوا لَهُ So they said to him, نُعْطِيكَ مَا سَأَلْتِ No, 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 we're not going to do that. We'll just give you whatever you ask. In other words, why don't you take some ransom or some payment from us, but don't make us do this. I will pay whatever you want. Now that they're on the hook. So they're like, we'll just pay a fine. And can we just pay you a fine and leave? فَبْعَثْ مَعَنَا رَجُلًا أَمِينًا Just, uh, you know, how about this? You send with us someone you can trust. Send with us someone. So we will pay you, but don't make us do this. This oath. We're, we're not ready for that. قُمْ يَا أَبَا عُبَيْدَ The Prophet said, stand up Abu Ubaidah. Go with them. Because Abu Ubaidah is a trusted companion. Abu Ubaidah says, هَذَا أَمِينُ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ Abu Ubaidah gets up and says, this, this is the only one we trust in this ummah, I'm not coming with you. <laughs> so he stood up to them and said, no, you're, you better deal with the Prophet yourself, Abbas. This is attributed eventually to Ibn Abbas. Eight of the uh, ministers, eight of the preachers and the, 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 the people of the, the worshipping class from the church, clergymen, of the, the church from people of Najran came to the Messenger of Allah. Minhumul Aqib was Sayyid, among them the leader and the, his assistant. Allahu Ta'ala, and Allah revealed then, Fa'qul Ta'ala, tell, tell them, come on, we'll call our children, your children. This ayah came down. We're not getting the details. As I read more, you'll start, more details will start unraveling. Okay? Fa'qalu akhirna thalathata ayyam. They said, okay, okay, we'll do this. We'll call our children like you're calling your children. Wait three days. Give us three days, we'll do this. فَذَهَبُوا إِلَى بَنِي قُرَيْضَ وَالنَّظِيرِ وَبَنِي قَيْنُقَعِ They went to Banu Qurayza, Banu Nadir, Banu Qaynuqa' which are the Jewish tribes. So the Christian ministers are going now to the Jewish tribes and saying what? فَاسْتَشَارُهُمْ What do you think? What should we do? We came here, he's asked us to make this prayer that if he's lying and if we're lying, whoever's lying among us may God's curse be on them. فَأَشَارُوا عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْ يُصَالِحُهُ وَلَا يُلَعِنُهُ they gave, him this, they gave them the suggestion, you better not take that on. You need to just make peace with him. Give him some kind of reconciliation and get out of this trouble. Because you don't want to do that. وَقَالُوا هُوَ النَّبِيُ الَّذِي نَجِدُهُ فِي التَّورَاتِ He's the prophet we know in the Torah. So don't mess with him. Just do what he says. 
فصالح النبي so make peace with the prophet على ألف حلة على ألف حلة في صفر وألف ألف في رجب ودراهم give him a thousand gold coins in the month of safar and earn more money and give him another thousand gold coins in the month of rajab and give him some more dirhams on top of that pay him pay him a fine and get out of this wa rubiya annahum salahuhu ala an yu'tuhu fi kulli 'am it's also been narrated that they said we'll we just make peace with you we don't want to have this conversation and every year we're going to go alf hullatin we're going to give you 2000 gold coins wa thalathan wa thalathina dir'an and we're going to give you 33 Uh, you know, armored vests that they used to use in battle. وَثَلَاثَةً وَثَلَاثِينَ بَعِيرًا And 33 camels. وَأَرْبَعًا وَثَلَاثِينَ فَرْسًا And we're going to give you uh, 34 horses. So, 100 items. 33, 33, 34. We'll give you 100 items and we'll give you these thousands. Just don't make us do this prayer. وَأَخْرَجَ فِي الدَّلَائِلِ أَيْضًا مِنْ طَلِيقِ الْكَلْبِ عَنْ نَبِي صَالِحْ عَنْ إِبْنِ عَبَاسِ Another narration attributed eventually to Ibn Abbas. أن وفد نجران من من النصارى قدموا على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that the um, the delegation from the Christians of Najran uh, came to meet with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and approached him وهم أربعة عشر رجلا من أشرافهم and these were fourteen of their most noble people منهم السيد وهو الكبير والعاقب هو الذي يكون بعده and their 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 leader was the Sayyid the leader And the Aqib is the one right after him, underneath him in rank. So 14 of them and two of the main ones came to meet with him, like the ambassadors on their behalf. So when they came, the prophets talked to them. And these are not just normal Christians. These are the knowledgeable who preach and teach Christianity. These are the people that give the sermons, who teach the prayers, who are like the authorities of religion. Here's, they're the ones that are coming to talk to the Prophet ﷺ. What does the Prophet say to them? Aslima, both of you accept Islam. Submit to God. Submit to Allah. Aslima. Qala, they both said, Aslamna. We've already submitted to God. The Prophet said, Ma aslam tuma. No, you haven't. What do you mean you submitted? No, you haven't. You know, this conversation happens a lot. You know, you should believe in God. You should believe in one God. I already do. No, you don't. You don't. And قَالَ بَنَا قَدَ سَبْنَا قَلَ They said, of course, we have, before you. We were already in submission to God before you. That's what do you think we've been doing all this time. قَالَ كَذَبْتُمَا You lie. يَمْنَعُكُمَا مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ ثَلَاثٌ Truly submitting to God, three things are keeping you from it. He's talking to these leaders of Christianity and telling them three things are keeping you from actually submitting to Allah. فِيكُمَا عِبَادَتُكُمَا الصَّلِيبِ Both of you. The first thing is your worship of the cross. You can't be worshiping God if you're worshiping the cross. If that's sacred to you, if that's holy to you. وَأَكْلُكُمْ الخنزير, And you've opened up the eating of swine. You're okay with eating pork. That is the second thing that keeps you from worshiping God. وَزَعْمُكُمَا أَنَّ لِلَّهِ وَلَدًا And your assumption that God has a son, the third. Three things that keep you from actually... That claim has no value because you do these three things. وَنَزَلَ إِنَّ مَثَلَ عِيسَى And then the ayah came, the example of Jesus as far as God is concerned is just like the example of Adam, the 59th ayah of uh, the surah. فَلَمَّا قَرَأَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ Then when the Prophet ﷺ recited that ayah to, to them, which, you know, خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابِ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ فَلَا تَكُنْ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ قَالُوا مَا نَعْرِفُ مَا تَقُولُ They said, we don't know what you're talking about. Excuse me? You, you don't know Adam? You're the people of the Bible. You don't know what he's talking about? You don't know the word of God be and it becomes? In the beginning there was the word and the word was with God. That's in your book, isn't it? And you're, you're saying what to the Prophet's face? Straight lie. What do they say? We don't know what you're talking about. ما نعرف ما تقول. I have no idea what you're saying. This, by the way, is a classic way of uh, dismissing a powerful argument is to act like you don't know what the other person's saying. What are you even talking about? It's completely logical. You're completely stumped. The only defense left is Make them feel like they don't know what they're talking about by just saying what? What? What does that mean? That, uh, play that card. And when somebody does that really well, you start doubting yourself like, uh, let me double check my references. <laughs> so it's a, it's a game. It's a game for them. فَمَنْ حَاجَكَ Then the ayah came. Whoever then wants to debate with you in it, even after knowledge has come. See, Allah called them out. They were trying to play games with revelation now. Acting like you don't know what I'm talking about. And they want to come and debate with you? Fine. Bring your children. Bring, no, the powerful thing about this is, تعالوا, 
come on up. Ta'al in Arabic is different from halumma. Halumma means come on. Ta'alu comes from ulu. Today we learned the harf of jar ala. Comes from the same origin. Ala means above, on. Ulu means elevation or height. Ta'alu means come on up. Meaning I'm calling you to something higher. I'm calling you to something higher. There's an elevation here. Rise up to the occasion. Ta'alu. Ila kalimatin. Or not in this ayah. Ta'alu nad'u abna'ana. We will call our children. Not you bring your children first. We bring our children first. And also your children. And we'll bring our women first. Wanisa'ana. Not their women first. Our women first. Nisa'ana. Wanisa'akum. And we will bring ourselves first. And then we'll, you can bring yourselves. We're not asking you to come and put yourselves at risk. We'll put ourselves at risk first. We will show up first. Then you can come. We're ready to say it. Fanabtahil. We will make ourselves humble and vulnerable before Allah. Open to Allah's wrath. Because we believe we have the truth. If we are not telling the truth, may Allah be angry with us. May Allah Thus we will place Allah's curse on the one who's lying. May Allah curse the one who's lying. We're not going to say may Allah curse you. We're not going to say may Allah curse us. We're just going to say what? May Allah curse the liars. May Allah's curse be placed upon those who lie. And we will make ourselves exposed to Allah's wrath if that, that be it. فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after he recited this ayah, the Prophet said to them, In Allah Ta'ala Qad Amarani. Allah has commanded me. Illam taqbalu hadha an ubahilakum. That if you don't accept this invitation I'm giving you to submit yourselves to Allah, Allah has commanded me that I challenge you to make yourselves vulnerable before Him in this way. That I that I call you to this. Is this a call to all Christians? Is this the call to all Jews? This was a call to those who knew the scripture. Allah knew they knew He's a prophet and they couldn't let go of their position. They didn't want to look bad to the rest of their clergy and He spoke to the two leaders among them. The two leaders are, what's going on in their head? We came with a group of 14 of the most noble. If we go back saying, hey, by the way, we're Muslim now. First thing that happens is they're no longer the leader. We have to pick a leader among the rem remaining 12. Then there were 12. <laughs> Right? That's going to happen. We're going to lose our position. The people that have respected us and learned from us and gave us this position, all of a sudden we will be the most humiliated among them. That's what's going to happen. I'm not willing to make that trade. Uh, give us three days. Uh, anything but this. N not this. You know? And then they're also calculating, well, if we do accept this challenge, we do believe in God and there's a possibility that we're going to start melting in front of everyone and the curse is going to play out and that's going to be even more humiliating in front of our people. So we're kind of stuck here. Allah's Prophet, Allah's Messenger says, Allah has commanded me to challenge you in this way. فَقَالُوا يَا أَبَ الْقَاسِمِ They said, Father of Qasim, بَلْ نَرْجِعُ No, 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 we're going back. فَنَنْظُرُ فِي أَمْرِنَا ثُمَّ نَأْتِيكَ Let us go back, think about what we are going to decide and we'll come back to you. In the previous narration I told you, how long did they take? Three days. They were alone with each other. And they confirmed the truth among each other. They're like, mm, yeah, this looks like he is in fact a prophet. The leader said to his assistant, Today you know for a fact, no, I swear to God, he is a prophet sent by God. This man is a prophet sent by God, no doubt. لَإِن لَا عَنْتُمُوهُ لِأَنَّهُ أَنَّهُ لِسْتِئْصَالِكُمْ If you curse him, or if you call on Allah, that may Allah curse a liar if he's a liar. If that happens, Allah will pluck you from the roots. This is going to uproot you entirely. There will be no trace left of you in history. Istiqsal means to unpluck a plant from the ground. It's not just to cut the top, because there's still a plant left. When you pull it up from the asl, it's called isti'sal. He said, this is going to turn into your uprooting completely. You'll be annihilated. وَمَا لَا عَنَا قَوْمٌ نَبِيًّا قَتْ فَبَقِيَ كَبِيرُهُمْ وَلَا نَبَتَ صَغِيرُهُمْ Never has any, prophet, any nation ever cursed a prophet except they're bigger, they're, they're elderly, have been chopped off, and no young of them ever grows again, meaning no new generation ever comes. Nations that curse their prophets are annihilated. That's what Allah does. 
فَإِنْ أَنْتُمْ لَنْ تَتْبَعُوهُ And if the case is that you're still not going to follow him, وَأَبَيْتُمْ إِلَّا إِلْفَ دِينِكُمْ And you have refused to follow him only because of your love of your own religion or you want to stay within your own ranks. فَوَاعِدُوهُ وَرَاجِعُوا إِلَىٰ بِلَادِكُمْ Then make him a promise, pay him some kind of penalty, appease him, just make him not upset with you and go back home. وَقَدْ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم خَرَجَ and by this time, the Prophet had already come out. They had made a, an appointment to meet at this place where they're going to make this prayer to Allah. So the Prophet had already come out, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَعَهُ عَلِي وَالْحَسَنْ وَالْحُسَيْنْ وَفَاطِمَ And with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is Ali and Hassan and Hussein and Fatima. You see what the Prophet did? We'll bring our children. You bring yours. We'll bring our women. You bring yours. We'll bring ourselves. You bring yours. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِنْ أَنَا دَعَوْتُ فَأَمِّنُوا أَنْتُمْ فَأَبَوْا أَلْيُنَاعِنُوا He said, the Prophet ﷺ that said to them, إِنْ أَنَا دَعَوْتُ If I were to call you, if, if I'm calling you, then I'm calling you for all of you to be safe. I'm asking all of you to accept safety. I don't want to destroy you. Accept safety, أَنْتُمْ فَأَبَوْا أَلْيُنَاعِنُوهُ Then they refused to challenge him that day. They refused to make that prayer, May Allah curse the liar. وَصَالَحُوهُ عَلَى الْجِزْيَةِ And they said, we'll just pay you a penalty. We'll pay you a penalty where we can't do this. وَعَنِ الشَّعْبِ فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ And according to Ash-Sha'bi, the Messenger said, صَلَى اللَّهِ لَقَدْ أَتَانِيَ الْبَشِيرِ بِهَلَكَةِ أَهْلِ النَّجْرَانِ An angel had come to me, the good news had come to me. The, the, the information had come to me that the people of Najran, all of them, were going to be completely annihilated. حَتَّى الطَّيْرُ عَلَى الشَّجَرِ There was not going to be a bird left on a tree alive in Najran. لَوْ تَمُّوا عَلَى الْمُلَاعَنَةِ If they took up that challenge. There would have been no life left in Najran had they taken up that challenge. وَعَنْ جَابِرْ وَالَّذِي بَعَثَنِي بِالْحَقِّ لَوْ لَا فَعَلَ لَوْ فَعَلَ لَأَمْطَرَ الْوَادِي عَلَيْهِمَا نَارًا He said, I swear by the one who made, appointed me, who gave me the mission of truth, meaning I swear by Allah, the one who gave me the mission of truth, had these two done it, had these two taken up my challenge to them, then fire would have rained onto, onto their valley from the sky. And then he says, And another narration, when these, these ministers... When these clergymen saw the Prophet ﷺ coming, approaching them, and with him there's Ali, there's Fatima, there's the two Hassans, Hassan and Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, qala ya ma'ashar al-nasara, their leader said, listen Christians, his own people, listen Christians, inni la ara wujuhan, I see faces right now. Whose faces does he see? The Prophet ﷺ, Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein, his family. I see faces right now. لَوْ سَأَلُوا اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ أَنْ يُزِيلَ جَبَلًا مِنْ مَكَانِهِ لَأَزَالَهُ If those faces asked Allah to move mountains from their place, God would move mountains from their place. If they pray for something, it's going to happen. I see it on their face. And so he said, فَلَا تُبَاهِلُوا وَتَهْلَكُوا Don't take them on, you'll be destroyed. Don't do this, you'll be destroyed. This was the open challenge given to the Christian people. You know, this illustrates something about not Allah's anger with Christians, but Allah's anger with the knowledgeable among the Christians. You see, Allah is angry with, uh, with Banu Israel and their rabbis in Surah Al-Baqarah. He's very angry with them. But not this. This is some next level stuff, isn't it? You don't have this with the rabbis of Banu Israel. Allah didn't make this call to the rabbis of the Israelites. The rabbis of the Israelites committed crimes against prophets, which is a, by extension a crime against Allah. Because you are opposed to prophets and you killed prophets and you committed crimes against prophets, you are an enemy to God. You are an enemy to Allah. The leadership, the corrupted leadership of the Christians, they didn't just commit crimes against prophets. Prophets. They committed a crime directly against Allah. That's a crime directly against Allah. Claiming Allah has a son, and not only that, then saying this is what Allah teaches, 
and then convincing others this is what you must believe? And those who didn't believe it, saying that they're condemned until they do this shirk? And this is what Isa would have wanted? It's not the, 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 it's different from you know, the, the Jews. They demonized prophets. They actually made prophets look bad. And Quran came and proved the innocence of prophets. Christians did not demonize Jesus. They actually deified Jesus the other way. But their crime is far worse. Not at the hands of those who don't know, but at the hands who do know, Allah is especially angry. Especially angry with them. And He opened this door. A door that was not open for the Quraysh. A door that was not open for the Banu Israel. What it was open for them. The knowledgeable among them. This is why qualifying the audience of the Quran is so important. This, I said in class before we did dars on this, this is one of those ayat that is so grossly misused. How is it grossly misused? This ayah is nowadays used for you're just having a conversation with your Christian co-worker at the office and you're like, oh yeah, I'm ready to say, may God curse me. You ready to say it? Let's do this. Let's go outside, parking lot's better. So we wouldn't want the building to collapse on us. What insane, what, what, what insane person? Are, you know, Allah commanded His Prophet to do this with these people. Did you hear the words of the Prophet ﷺ? Allah has commanded me to speak to you in this way. Meaning this was a special instruction to these people to make this point and to get them to, to, to back off or to actually un- realize deep down inside them annahu al-haq. This is in fact the truth, you know. And after they back off in this way, then you get to say what's coming in the next ayah, inna hadha lahu al haq This is the true account. This is what really happened with Jesus. When you say, no, no, what about this? What about the deity Jesus? You're, de- you're, you know, you're defying or you're denying the, uh, what happened, he was raised from the cross and you know, God selected him. All, all the accounts that they give, Allah just gave a simple account of what happened with Jesus and it's not as academic and as exhaustive as what they have. And at the end of it, okay, fine, if this isn't right, then I'm willing to stand by this and say that if this is wrong, then may God curse those who are lying. I'm not lying about Jesus. I'm telling the truth about Jesus. If you say you're saying the truth about Jesus and you love him so much, so if you love him so much, you must definitely be committed to telling the truth about him. Why don't you put God who you love so much before you and say, he will save you. Why don't you just come out and say, may God curse the liar who, who's lying about any of this, about Isa a.s. himself. Your loyalty to Jesus should compel you to accept this challenge. And yet, we can't do this. And they backed away. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is the reality of the, the challenge of the Prophet ﷺ. The, know something. The messengers came as a mercy for people. But the messengers, especially the messengers that came like to the Jewish people. And after that, finally our Messenger ﷺ. When he speaks to those that have knowledge of previous scripture, the, the conversation isn't nice. The conversation is, how do you know the book and you do this? Then it's not a soft conversation. That is a rigid, rough conversation. That is a direct and harsh conversation. Because Allah is saying, you were, you're the only people carrying the trust Allah left behind. The only traces of prophethood left other than Muhammad Rasulullah are the people knowledgeable in the book. And you're the source of corruption? You're the source of shirk? You're the source of kufr? How is that acceptable? Anybody else, the mushrikun doing shirk because they're in thousands of years of ignorance, you know, to warn a nation whose ancestors weren't even warned. They have ancestry is ignorance. That's something else. You, people of book, you people of knowledge, you're the ones bearing witness. That's what this entire passage is going to be about. How are you doing this? You already know. How are you believing this? How are you saying these things? Well, you're yourselves witness. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? And after this challenge, which they got scared from, Allah didn't keep Staying aggressive. The aggression is done now. By the way, no, the last thing I'll share with you today, The truth is from your master, don't fall into doubt. Remember that? Don't become weak on the inside. That was about defense. Because don't fall weak when you're being attacked. But this next ayah isn't defense, is it? What is it now? It's offense. It's, it's the other way. Not only are you in, not in doubt, you are so not in doubt, you, you will expose how in doubt they are. You'll expose their doubts. And so the tables have been turned. And now that the tables have been turned, now Allah will speak to them directly and even in a sense lovingly. 
directly and lovingly. So the words Ya Ahl al Kitab will come now. Qul Ya Ahl al Kitab. And it's going to be a softer invitation. Now that, okay, fine, you don't want to accept the challenge, but don't run yet. Don't run yet. Just think about what the fact that you didn't accept this challenge means something in you is telling you this is, this is worth considering. So why don't you just listen? And so now they're going to be given an invitation. And that's what, you know, what, what's going to happen from here on. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim.